Yeah, and I say that a lot even when we talk about services too. And that's something that we constantly have to, or like I have to constantly fight against too. It's like, you might start a really cool service, um, but it's like the maintaining of it, right? So it's like almost like, you know, people can start doing testing, but how do you ramp up beyond that? People might start doing vaccines. How do you ramp up beyond that? Or even like you might start diabetes education, but like what we found working with the University of Texas is so many pharmacies will get accredited to do diabetes education and just fall off, right? So how do you not just set something up initially and then just let it kind of like fade into nothingness. And so it's a hard challenge and it's, it does take a mindset of constantly pushing and advancing and figuring out new stuff. And so uh, I think you're at like a, a complacency or just um, almost like a fear of the uncomfortable, you know, like kind of like nature of being in between like, all right, like it's going to be really difficult to, you know, add a print queue. Like that was the hardest thing for my, my team. Like, you know, we used to have a stack of labels. Every time you process a prescription, a label would print out. And then, you know, print queue was a revelation to me at the chain. And so coming back, I was like, guys, like, like we need baskets. We need to make sure that we can do work efficiently. We need to make sure patients are grouped together and, and just doing that. And it did take a while. Like, to be honest, it was really, really difficult, um, especially like coming back. But now I think, you know, you kind of build this culture and my team's great because they're so flexible. Like every time I throw in a new post edit, you know, they'll, they'll get mad at me for like a second, but then um, <laughs> after, after a while, they kind of like, you know, get used to it and stuff too. So, but I think part of it is just building that culture of, Hey, things are going to change and it's okay. It's not scary. You know, we're, we're going to start doing texting and you know, you have these post edits that come up and you are going to have a print queue and we're going to start doing med sync and we're going to start doing all this stuff. And so it's definitely like a mindset. Um, and sometimes it gets hard because sometimes you just are tired, <laughs> but you just yeah. can't, can't give up, you know? Well, and there there's only so many things that, you know, one person can do. And so if you're the owner, operator, bench pharmacist and an entrepreneur and, and new service uh, researcher and implementer and, uh, you know, patient success manager, like it, it's really hard to do all of those things and continue to do all of those things. So it seems like Mark's built a, a great team that kind of allows the the different team members in the pharmacy to fill those niches and, and really grow. Um, you know, and I, I think it's really interesting that, you know, um, as a, uh, as the pharmacist in charge, you're able to have such a, a strong role in, in, uh, Terrytown, but also within, uh, Texas Pharmacy Association and speaking at various events with NCPA. Um, so I, I think that's probably, you know, something um, that that I would guess changed with with Mark from, you know, his father's generation of being a bench pharmacist or or has has that always kind of been their management structure? I don't, I don't think so. I think that's really unique to Mark. And like, um, that's the one thing I wish um, I never knew Brian, Mark's dad, but he was like, I mean, he's like the pharmacy Yoda. He always had a saying and a, a thought for everything. And, <laughs> and I think a lot of um, um, pharmacists do like that. Like my uncle owns a pharmacy even to this day in Hawaii. And it was very interesting seeing kind of like the old school mentality of like my uncle was in the pharmacy every single day, every single hour. And he would always say, Randon, if I'm not here, that means I'm paying someone else to be here. And I think it's just a shift from um, thinking of, well, yeah, if you're not there, you're having to pay someone. But what what can you do in that time? Right. Like if so, when I became PIC, PIC that's one thing that Mark's always uh, been really great about is just giving you resources and time and just saying, hey, you know what, I'm hey, take 20 hours outside of the pharmacy and see what you can do. Um, and actually, he was, when I first <laughs> kind of came into this role, he was like, um, Randon, you should be full time out off the bench working on all the stuff that you want to do, because like that's really going to move the needle. And then I was the one that was like, I don't know, Mark, I still want to have one foot in the pharmacy and I don't want to lose being a good pharmacist. And I'll do 20. I'll, let me do 20 hours a week outside the pharmacy. And he was like, that's fine. But I mean, in three weeks, you're going to come back and realize it's not enough. And sure enough, you know, all the things that we were trying to do, I was like, Mark, you're right. Like, I do need just full time to be able to do this. And part of it's the team that we are not part, but a lot of it, if not most of it's the team we have, because everything that we're talking about doing, you can't do unless you have people that you can trust to do it. And I think that's the big thing that um, Mark kind of realized as well was he did the same thing to start our huge uh, long term care pharmacy. They have, you know, over a hundred something employees. They have employees all over the country that started in the 10 by 10 foot um, little closet in our old location that we had from 1971 to 2010. And all of that started in that little room because, you know, 
Mark said yes to an opportunity and kept figuring it out. And so I think that's what we're really great. And that's why I call it the Terrytown way is, you know, it's not even like fear of failure, but always being okay learning and growing and taking a chance. And uh, a lot of what I say is uh, when opportunities arise, we accept the opportunities and figure out how to do it later. You know, um, like that was something that even we worked with y'all on. Uh, we had an opportunity to go and immunize all of the intellectually um, disabled folks around Texas. But that would mean, I mean, originally they quoted us like 50,000 people. And imagine data entering vaccines for 50,000 people. Yeah. So that's when we reached out to, you know, y'all and Josh and was like, Josh, we need a way to mass upload patients and vaccines. And then, yeah, I mean, and then y'all did it and stuff too. And so we ended up not utilizing Pioneer for that project because the state health department made us use their proprietary system. But that kind of responsiveness to um, the need is is huge. And so I think a lot of it is, I mean, I had no idea how we were going to data enter all that stuff or get it all taken care of. But, you know, it we just have to accept these opportunities as they come up. Otherwise, you know, if you keep saying, oh, well, I don't know how that would work. And it's kind of like the perfect's the enemy of of good or, you know, good enough. Like, just figure it out. Like, you know, we can give shots, we can data enter. If we have to figure out how to do that, we'll, we'll do it later. So I really do appreciate like Mark's mentorship. And it's been, it's been really cool just having a lot of freedom to practice. And I think that's the benefit of independent pharmacy is that you have a lot of autonomy. Thanks for listening to this clip from Beyond the Scripts, presented by the Catalyst Pharmacy Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please support our channel by liking, subscribing, and clicking the notification bell so that you'll be notified anytime we post new content. To stay up to date with all of the latest independent pharmacy news and content, follow PioneerRx on your preferred social media platform. 